Uh, good day, good day, good day, good day. So, um, on this video, I'm going to quickly uh, show some solutions for those ones who are doing the assignment from um, Nimbabwe province, uh, from the southern district. So, I'll show you some of the solutions from the questions which are there on the uh, question paper. So, the first question that they were given, uh, it was basically an equating uh of exponential equations so they gave them two to the exponent x root x is equals to 2 to the exponent 27 so the first thing here we must just look at the the base we've got the same base meaning we can equate the exponent which will be x square root of x will be equals to 27 and then from there onwards to remove the square root you will square both sides then once you square both sides, therefore you'll be left with x squared times x on the left, which will be equals to 27 squared, which is uh, 729. Then from there onwards, x squared times x will give us a cube. Then uh, you can also change 729 to become an exponent, which will give us 9 to the power of 3. So if we've got the same exponent, then the answer just becomes the base, meaning our answer will be x is equals to 9. So the second question... Again, it was also an exponential equation. So on the second one, they gave them a longer question to focus on. So the question was uh, 2 to the exponent 3x plus 1 minus 2 to the exponent 3x minus 1 plus 8 to the power of x is equal to 12. So whenever I deal with this type of question, first thing first, you need to go and uh, sort of like uh, try to have the same common factor all along because it becomes easy to get a common factor so as you can see here i just went there and rearranged my exponential equations which means now i'm going to have two to the power of one and also i'm going to have two to the power of negative one then from there onwards you go there and get the common factor which is two to the power of three x then you open the bracket and then you look for all those factors and then you equate everything to 12 and then when you add all those numbers which are in the bracket they give me 3 over 2 which means i'm going to divide both sides by 3 over 2 meaning on the left i'll be left only with 2 to the power of 3x then on the right i'll be left with 8 so when you change 8 it can become 2 to the power of 3 therefore you can equate uh, two bases meaning we'll be left with 3x is equals to 3 and then we know if we divide both sides by 3, our answer becomes 1. So that's the second question they gave them. So the third one was about um, the square roots. So the third question was about the square roots. Let's get the camera to focus. So the third one was about uh, the square roots. Sorry guys about this. The camera is no longer a camera. Okay, now it's back to focus. So... With the square root, they give them square root of 5 minus square root of 4 is equals to over square root of 5 plus square root of 4. So the first thing that you must do here is to uh, do the, what we call rationalizing the denominator by having the other number which will have a different sign. The bottom number that you have here will then come the other side with having a different sign, which will then become square root of 5 minus square root of 4. Then you multiply the numerator and the denominator with the same number. Then from there on once you simplify by multiplying everything. Then once you simplify, when I simplify everything and then I add the like terms, I end up with um, 9 minus 2 square root of 4 times square root of 5 as my numerator. Everything was over 1. So we know it means everything over 1. The answer becomes uh, whatever the numerator was. So that, that's the first question, about the first set of question which I did. Then from there on, the other one was also dealing with sans. So they give them 2 root 8 minus 4 root 32 plus 3 root 15. From there onwards, you just need to go and change the numbers which are there in the square root. And then from there onwards, you can see 8 became 4 times 2, 32 became 16 times 2, 50 became 25 times 2. Then from there onwards, you rearrange everything as it is and then just need to go and expand your square root as you can see because we know that square root of 4 is equals to 2 then it becomes 2 times 2 then from there onwards you go and add all the like terms since square root of 2 is common for everyone 
that will be that one then the next one which i did was the one which was having two to the power of of exponent five to the power of seven six so with this one just need to go again you will have five to the power of four as your base times five to the power of two then you know that the cone factor that i'm having here will become five to the power of thirty four which i'll take it out put everything in the bracket and then i get all those numbers inside so when i add those numbers inside they gave me uh 48 and then the, the two five to the power of fours will cancel each other meaning i'm left with 48 then at the bottom i'll be left with two so 48 divided by two will give us 24 as our answer then from there we went to nature of roots first thing first was the discriminant which we know and then they become b squared minus 4ac because the question was saying that the roots are real so you need to make sure that the roots are real and then from there onwards just put where this b you put b with this a you put a with the c you put c which i did and then i simplified everything to 25 plus 4p and then from there onwards since the question was asking what the value of p was just have to live with p take the number on the other side then from there onwards 3.2 was asking us to do a question where a number can be defined which means if you are dealing with a denominator that can be defined you must just do uh, the whole thing greater than zero so from there onwards if i get the factors i got x plus 5 and also x plus 5 which if i would put them as critical values only negative 5 will come but my graph uh, is built above zero in two different points which was uh, before negative 5 and also after negative 5 so my final answer was x is close to greater than 5 or x is greater than 5 or x is less than 5 then there was this other question which I also received. It was about um, finding the area. So with that type of question, uh, first one that I did was about proving that the area that they gave us, uh, we can use all the info that they gave us to find the area as given. So we need to prove that area. First thing first, they gave us the perimeter of 560. We know that area is equal to length times breadth. So all the details which are given there, I just went there and add them as they are. Then the perimeter, I just go and went there and simplified it using the 4x and the 4y which was given to me then from there onwards it became easy to simplify because i already have the area once i got the area i put everything into one which was 8x because y i already knew it was 140 minus 2x then i just put them as, as it is so if you're not following i will advise look at the step as it is and then that will be the answer because i'm trying to keep this video below 10 minutes yes yeah because i can't have it above 10 minutes so that was the answer for A, which I've proven. And then here was the second question, which was 1.3.2, which was the second question from the one about the area. So first thing first, the, the area we got from the previous answer. Now you have to go and do the derivative, which I know is grade 12. So you go into derivative, which will um, sum up to um, 1,120 1, minus 32x. Then you create everything to zero we go and solve for x so when you solve for x therefore x will be 1120 divided by 32 then for x will be equals to 35 then the 35 that you got you go and put it back on your area which led to me finding 9600 as our final answer then from there onwards i continued also with the nature of roots which i was given so i think this one was asking us to discuss if the roots are, are real or not so when you look at the uh, x that i was getting it was above uh, zero if my x was above zero this uh, in a way was giving me an indication that if x is above zero therefore the roots must be real but if my x was negative therefore roots would have been non-real so then i continued and did also one which was about k method so they gave us x squared minus 2x and then it's equals to 18 over 45 over uh, x squared minus 2x. So I've got the same number. Then I guess let that number become the k. Then from there onwards, I put everything as k. Then I simplified, find the factors. Once I get the factors, I take back the whole thing back as it is. Then I solve for x again because I wouldn't know what k was. So I go and solve for x again. So my two answers that I got was x is equals to 5 or x is equals to negative 3. The other one was x squared, x is equals to 3 or x is equals to negative 1. Um, thank you guys, thank you guys uh, for, um, 
paying attention on the video. If you've got any question, please comment on the comment section and see what I can do again next time. Thank you very much.